What's up everybody, my name is Mike, my boy Drew here, and we're going to be talking about the different types of word formation processes. Alright, so the first one we have is lexical change, right? So last week we learned lexicon is basically the hidden knowledge of a language or vocabulary of a person. Uh, when we say lexical change, it refers to a change in the meaning or use of a word. Uh, it can also be a generational shift in preference for one word or one phrase to another word or phrase. Um, so we're going to use an example, act something out for you right now. The word we're going to be referring to is the word text and how it changes over time and different parts of speech from a noun to a verb and then as well as a generational shift from like text in a book compared to text over technology. So here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready for the skit? Hey, man. What's up? Did you read the text? Oh, yeah, I'm reading it right now. I got this uh, book right here for class later. Loose ends. This is crazy. You got to read this paragraph, man. Man, I don't care about that. I'm talking about Coach's text, man. Did you read Coach's text? Oh, Coach's text? I didn't see that, man. I got to respond. I didn't know you were talking about the one over the phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he changed practice from four to five. Yeah. Damn. All right. I'll text him back right now. Yeah, confirm ASAP. Oh, this boy's about to be in trouble. All right, so the next type of word formations that we're going to be working on is the addition of new words, right? So um, pretty much <laughs> what that means is that over time, words are added to a language, right? And it makes the inventory of lexical items larger. So larger. think about it is you go to buy a dictionary in the year 2000, right? There's this many pages. Now, 20 years later, we go and buy a dictionary. There's this many pages because of all the new language words that have been added. We're going to act something out for you right now. Skit coming up. Think of the word selfie. Kind of in the last five years, blew up, selfie sticks, all that stuff. New word, new language, right? Here we go. Man, I got to get going. Hey, man. What's up? Can you take a picture? I'm in a rush, man. I gotta go. Please, please, bro. Can you take a picture of me? Just one. I need right here next, next to the statue. Please. I could, but you could also just take a selfie, man. I gotta catch the bus. What do you mean a selfie? A selfie? You haven't heard of that? Oh, man. It's this new thing that came out. So it's like, basically, you hit the camera, right? Right here. And you turn it around. Bam. See that? It turns around. Now you take a selfie like Let's that. Let's take one. Yeah. All right. Okay, have a good one. I gotta go. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Learn something new. Hey, new selfie. word. Selfie. Learn a new word. All right. Isn't that crazy? Selfie. All right. So the next section we're going to be talking about is word coinage. So word coinage, from our understanding, is when new words are invented from existing materials to represent a new invention or development. Uh, it's a very rare and uncommon method, way to use new words, but in media, it's very marketable. Um, for people to try and outdo each other with new and better words to name their products, which eventually become trademarked and then adapted into the language. So we got some examples. Yeah, here. so Mike. like, perfect, right? Exactly what he said. So like an example like Kleenex, right? Yeah, like so Kleenex, you use it to clean up messes or wipe stuff up, ultimately cleaning. That's very marketable and trademark. Another example would be Band-Aid. Band-Aid, right? So aiding with a bandage over a cut on your knee or wherever. Good. Another one in the food from the food industry, right? Jello. Jello. It looks like gel. It looks kind of appetizing, but it tastes good and it's marketable. So jello is a way for word coinage. Alright, so yeah, continuing on. The next section is what it sounds like, right? It's um, words from names, right? So so words from names is a process where someone created something that stuck with society, right? And was adopted into the language itself. Um, you know, some examples of this are Arnold Palmer, right? So you got a, a famous golfer, right, who liked his drink, half iced tea, half lemonade. And over time it became trademarked and just used in society as, hey, I want an Arnold Palmer. You can go to any restaurant now, any fast food place and be like, hey, I want an Arnold Palmer. They're going to know that you want half iced tea, half lemonade. Good. Another example, sandwich. Sandwich. Came from a guy who was gambling and he loved his food so much but he didn't want to make a mess while he was gambling so he put all of his food between two slices of bread and then it just caught on society used it and it became known as a sandwich 
Nice. And then also our last example is uh, paparazzi, right? So a very popular one within, um, you know, the, the social media uh, era where this word kind of comes from the name paparazzo, which was a photographer. Um, and he back was in the day. back in the day, right? He was, uh, he was after celebrities and he was doing it in a sneaky way, just kind of how you see now, right? Where they try to expose you. All right, so our next topic today is blends. Blends is, you take two words and literally combine it, but each word has a small part deleted. So a few examples of this are smog, right? You take smoke, fog, you make smog. Uh, breakfast, um, not breakfast, brunch. Breakfast and lunch, make brunch. Motel, you take motor, hotel, you make motel. Podcast, you're gonna take uh, iPod, with broadcast and it's called a podcast and then our favorite infomercial so you got the information and the commercial which we're gonna act out for you right now okay put this down all right so right here we have this lovely chair it could be used for the comfort of your home or even to study in class you can write here you can also take a nap here if the teacher is boring just kidding and it's great to save space. Not only that, but you can use it to work out too, as we use for dips here. Dips here, whatever you like. So this chair is awesome for all those reasons. Call 1-800-CHAIRS now to get yours. Wait, there's more. There's more. Free shipping if you buy within the next five minutes. Hurry, hurry now. <laughs> Thanks for that infomercial, Drew. Way to blend. This guy sure could blend something up. Anyways, <laughs> here we go. Moving on. So our next example of word formation process is reduced words. All right. Very common now, right? This is so relevant in today's culture. Um, everybody's trying to abbreviate everything, right? Trying to take the easy way out. So the process of um, one of the processes of abbreviating everything is called clipping, right? So the, the clipping process basically means that you're taking a long word and cutting out a few syllables, right, to shorten the word. Um, for example, refrigerator to fridge. Thank you. Um, there is also another outcome where clip words, right, change the meaning, right? You clip a word and the meaning changes. So like you have fan and fanatic. Two different meanings, two right. different words. Two different words. Real quick, I want to add one thing. Phrases. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to the store. I want to get a slushie. I want a slushie. Um, what are you doing? What you doing? Perfect. So another, so another example of reducing words, right, is called acronyms. We use acronyms all the time. An acronym is an abbreviation formed from the initial or first letter of words pronounced as a single word. So for example, we got, you know, my alma mater, UConn, the University of Connecticut. And you also have uh, where I work, COPA, stands for Comprehensive Object Objective Performance Assessment. Um, another word, LOL, which stands for Laugh out loud. <laughs> or SMH. Shake my head. Or BRB. Be right back. Ooh, we're hot. We're, we're hot. hot. Our next word formation process topic is borrowing or loaning words. This happens all the time and is when words from other languages are an important source of new words in the English language. Um, English has directly and indirectly borrowed words, so an example of directly borrowing words is taking the word feast from France and making it a word in English. Um, an example of indirectly borrowing words is a word like algebra. So that was directly borrowed from Spain, from Arabic, and then English borrowed it from Spain. So it made it indirect because there was multiple parties involved. And fun fact, 20,000 words in English have been borrowed to this day. Yep, thanks, Drew. Uh, so Drew kind of briefly touched on the history of loan words. Um, before these words were originated from the French, the Arabic, and the Spanish language, the English language has been borrowing words since the, the Norman conquest back in 1066. 
um, way before my day. Um, way before don't day. want to make this a history lesson or anything, right? But the English language goes back further than borrowing from the French. Um, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes created Old English through Germanic Celtic dialects and Latin borrowings. Um, to fast forward three years after the conquest was over, French was spoken. 30 years. 30 years, excuse me, three centuries, thank you. French was spoken, and the Saxons, the Angles, and the Jute literacy was abandoned, but English continued in home churches and marketplaces. Um, the English language obtained French and Latin literacy that is still used today. For example, some words are government, um, money, crown, court, and your favorite zero calorie free soda, LaCroix. That wraps up our presentation. Thank you for watching. Sorry if it wasn't amazing, but we try to be authentic as possible and make it entertaining for you guys. We had fun, you know, with the formation